Hello, I'm Shelby Scott, and I thought I would read you some horror poetry tonight. This is my first video on YouTube where I'm actually showing my face. <laughs> um, so be gentle. Let's get started, shall we? This first poem is by Robert Graves. And it's called A Child's Nightmare. Through long nursery nights he stood by my bed unwearying, loomed giant, formless, queer, purring in my haunted ear, that same hideous nightmare thing, talking as he lapped my blood in a voice cruel and flat, saying forever, Cat, cat, cat. That one word was all he said, that one word through all my sleep. In monotonous mock despair, nonsense may be light as air, but there's nonsense that can keep. Horror bristling round the head, when a voice cruel and flat says forever, cat. 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 He had faded. He was gone. Years ago with nursery land. When he leapt on me again. From the clank of a night train. Overpowered me foot and head. Lapped my blood while on and on. The old voice cruel and flat. Says forever. Cat. 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 Morphia. Drowsed again I lay, in a crater by high wood. He was there with straddling legs, staring eyes as big as eggs, purring as he lapped my blood, his black bulk darkening the day, with a voice cruel and flat. Cat, 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 he said, cat, cat. When I'm shot through heart and head, and there's no choice but to die. The last word I'll hear, no doubt, won't be charge or bomb them out, nor the stretcher bears cry, let that body be, he's dead. But a voice cruel and flat, saying forever, cat, cat, cat. This next poem is by Thomas Hardy. It's called The Shadow on the Stone. Thomas had recently actually lost his wife, and this was to express his grief. I went by the druid stone that broods in the garden, white and lone, and I stopped and looked at the shifting shadows that at some moments fall thereon from the tree hard by with a rhythmic swing, and they shaped in my imagining, to the shade that a well-known head and shoulders threw there when she was gardening. I thought her behind my back, yea, her I long had learned to lack, though how did you get into this whole track? And there was no sound but the fall of a leaf, as a sad response, and to keep down grief, I would not turn my head to discover that there was nothing in my belief. Yet I wanted to look and see that nobody stood at the back of me, but I thought once more, nay, I'll not unvision a shape which somehow there may be. So I went on softly from the glade, and left behind me throwing her shade, as she were indeed an apparition, my head unturned, lest my dream should fade. I think that one is so beautiful. Basically, if you didn't understand, sometimes poetry is kind of hard to understand in the moment. Um, it was about him 
visiting the garden and seeing the shadow or perceiving that the ghost of his wife is standing behind him. And he doesn't want to turn around to see that she's not really there. So he decides to think, yes, she is there. And I'm going to leave without turning around so I can always believe that she was there. Isn't that beautiful? This next poem is very, very famous. I may have read it on um, the Scary to Sleep podcast before. I'm not sure. Um, It's one of my favorites. It's probably a lot of people's favorites. Um, This is by Emily Dickinson, uh, the OG emo chick. Uh, (laughs) This is Because I Could Not Stop for Death. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves, and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away. My labor and my leisure, too, for his civility. We passed the school where children strove, at recess in the ring. We passed the fields of gazing grain, we passed the setting sun. Or rather, he passed us. The dews drew quivering and chill, for only gossamer my gown, my tippet only tool. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice in the ground. Since then, tis centuries, and yet feels shorter than the day. I first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity. Emily Dickinson is one that I think probably a lot of people read in school, but um, if you're not familiar with her work, I highly suggest you check it out. She is not overhyped. She is fantastic. And this last poem um, is a little different. Um, It's called The Fairies. It's by William Allingham. And I consider it horror because fairies, uh, the, the idea and like the, um, myth of the fairy and the fae, I am, and I apologize to call it a myth. I know that is actually part of some of your faiths. Um, I don't mean to say this, but this, in this case, he's referring to the myth of the fairies. Um, there are some terrifying stories. Look up changelings if you've never heard of them. Um, so this is. The fairies. Up the airy mountain, down the rushy glen, we daren't go a hunting for fear of little men. We folk, good folk, trooping all together, green jacket, red cap, and white owl's feather. Down along the rocky shore, some make their home. They live on crispy pancakes of yellow tide foam. Some in the reeds of the black mountain lake, with frogs for their watchdogs, all night awake. High on the hilltop, the old king sits. He is now so old and gray, he nigh lost his wits. With a bridge of white mist, column kill he crosses, on his stately journeys from Sleeve League to Rosses, or going up with the music on cold starry nights to sup with the queen of the gay northern lights. They stole little Bridget for seven years long. When she came down again, her friends were all gone. They took her lightly back between the night and morrow. They thought that she was fast asleep, but she was dead with sorrow. They have kept her ever since deep within the lake on a bed of fig leaves, watching till she wake. By the craggy hillside, through the mosses bare, they have planted thorn trees for my pleasure here and there. Is any man so daring as dig them up in spite? He shall find their sharpest thorns in his bed at night. Up the airy mountain, down the rushy glen, We daren't go a-hunting for fear of little men. 
We folk, good folk, trooping all together. Green jacket, red cap, and white owl's feather. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it brought you some soothing relaxation and you can drift off to sleep easily. Again, I'm Shelby Scott, and there will be more of these in the future. And thank you for being here for my YouTube face debut. <laughs> Good night. Sweet dreams.